now to the book of Romans, chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And tonight I want to talk about a subject that um, is uh, an aspect of the character of God. When the Lord described himself or revealed himself to um, Moses. Moses had asked the Lord to show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will show you my glory. And he, in showing him his glory, he said, this is who I am. And he began to describe himself. He said, I am the Lord, gracious. What, that one of the words that he spoke about himself was the word gracious. And the word gracious, it means disposed to show favor. Yes. Disposed to show favor. It means, the word disposed means inclined to a type of behavior or given to a type of behavior. Ready, willing. And so God said, I am ready to show favor. I am willing to show favor or grace. I am, this is my inclination. This is my type of behavior. I am gracious. Amen. And so as we talk tonight about the favor of God, I want a lot of us need to constantly come back. I think all of us need to constantly come back and rehearse what the favor of God is for us as his children, as New Testament believers, because God instructs us to expect it. He instructs us to hope in it. He instructs, instructs us to uh, have that looking for it. And so uh, as we look here in Romans chapter 5, I want to begin in verse 1. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Hallelujah. So, here we see that in Christ Jesus, we have access into the favor of God, access by faith. And that's why we're talking about favor tonight, because faith is the hearing of the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. And the only way for us to access the favor of God is by faith. Yes. So we've got to hear about the favor for us to know about the favor and believe for the favor, and expect the favor, and recognize it when it comes into Amen. our life. Amen? And so that's why we're looking at it. The Weiss translation says it is our entry. Faith, faith is our entry into this unmerited favor. Faith is our entry into this unmerited favor. So God wants us to enter into his favor tonight. He wants us to enter in and experience things that only favor can do for us. Now we know this was God and God alone who caused this open door in my life, who caused this flow of goodness in my life. This is the favor of God. Yeah. Amen? And then it says in the Amplified, it says, Through Him also we have our access, our entrance, our introduction by faith into this grace this state of God's favor in which we firmly and safely stand. So he, he calls it an access, an entrance, an introduction by faith. Faith is the access. Faith is the entrance. Faith is what introduces us into this state of God's favor. A condition of God's favor. It's, a, it's not a one-time event. This is a, an objective that I have as I'm teaching this, that we don't see favor as just certain events that happen in our life. Well, that was the favor of God. But we see it as a force that is causing those events. 
that those events are happening because God's favor is on my life. Through Christ, by faith in Christ, by faith in what he's done, the favor is by faith in Christ, just like the salvation is by faith in Christ and the authority is by faith in Christ to every provision, but he wants us to see favor as a part of this provision. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 5 and verse 12 speaks of favor and in, it, um, describes it as a shield. Psalm chapter 5 and verse 12. And I'm going to read uh, the King James first. I may read the Amplified too. Psalm 5, 12 says, For the Lord will bless you, bless the righteous. With favor will you compass him. The center column reference says crown him. So when we see that, we're talking about not just a crown on the head, but an, in, uh, an encircling, something that circles, something that, uh, that covers and circles. So you will compass him as with a shield. Favor that circles you, favor that covers you, favor that, that, that is like a bubble around you, surrounding you like a shield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Amplified says uh, you will surround him with good will. And this may, be the, this may not be the Amplified Classic. I, I don't, I'm not sure. Let me see. It says, goodwill, pleasure, and favor. You will surround him with goodwill. God's goodwill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pleasure and favor. So he wants, th this, is, this is the design that God has for you in favor. This is where favor fits in your life. An encircling yeah. A force field around your life. We would describe it from our Star Trek sci-fi movies as a force field, right? <laughs> they didn't know about Star Trek when, when, when David was writing that in Psalm 5, right? So he couldn't say, you know, like that, that force field that you saw in Star Trek and beam me up, Scotty. And no, but we can see when it's talking about compassing and encircling and covering that it is a a, wherever I'm walking, it's walking with me. The favor of God is a force around my life. Yes. Hallelujah. God wanted it in the lives of his people to the point that God wrote a prayer and instructed the high priest to declare it over the people. Let's read that prayer in number six because it is a blessing prayer. And God wanted it to be uttered over his people or pronounced over his people by their authority, their spiritual authority. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. It says in number 624, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. And they will put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. So this is what God told Aaron and his sons to say over his people. These are words of blessing and they are descriptions of favor. When we look at different things that are identified as favor, for instance, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. That's one of the ways to describe favor, is that God is looking, looking yeah. kindly toward you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious. There we are with a, a definite favor. Declaration: The Lord be gracious. The Lord be favorable. Disposed to show you favor. Hallelujah. So God, this is, a, this is again showing us where favor fits in our life. It is supposed to be what is the, the governing flow of our life. And when we talk about the favor of God, the blessing is a blessing of favor. So when we see in the beginning that God spoke the blessing over Adam and Eve, he was speaking his favor over them. The blessing of God is a, 
um, an um, a, a, a abundance of, of uh, blessing. Let me read it from Genesis 12, Amplified, if you can pull that up for me. Genesis 12 in the Amplified. The blessing is the flow of the favor. And let me read in verse 2 of Genesis 12. The King James says, I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Can you um, show me the Amplified? I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you with abundant, that's the phrase I wanted right there, abundant increase of favors. That's the description that, that we have of the blessing, abundant increase of favors. So in the blessing that God has supplied in the beginning over Adam and in Christ, we are connected to Abraham's blessing. This blessing is what is ours in Christ, abundant increase of favors. The favor of God, abundant increase of it in our lives. Amen? John chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse 16, and go ahead, we'll go straight to the Amplified for this one. John 1, 16, and the King James says, Of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace, grace for grace. So grace is also defined as the favor of God. Favor for favor. Hallelujah. The Amplified says, Out of his fullness, talking of Jesus, out of his fullness, out of his abundance, we have all received, this includes you and me, we have all received, we have all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another. And spiritual gift, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift, that's what we've received in Christ. It is so immeasurable that, that when you amplify out what it means of His fullness we have received and grace for grace, it is heaped up portions of favor and spiritual blessings and grace. It, it will take eternity. For eternity, God is going to be showing us His kindness towards us in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2 tells us. Praise Hallelujah! Praise Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And we will never come to the point where we say, yeah, I've seen all that, God. That's, I'm, yeah, I know, you can't show me anything new. No, we're going to be con con continually looking at what God is revealing of His kindness, and we're going to say, for me? For me? You did that for me? You're giving that to me? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because He's a good Father. He's a heavenly Father. And he wants to show and reveal his kindness to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we, as we recognize this favor, I want to share with you something that altered a, a, a very difficult time in my life. Um, we were pastoring the church there in Kansas, and we had gone through a different... Uh, situations and changes in the church and people who had decided not to continue following the Lord. I've shared some of that testimony before and, and so uh, it was during the time that the world was going through a recession and so we were maintaining and, and trying to uh, keep the faith of the people together and I remember I was uh, in my office at the Kansas location, and I was listening to Dr. Jerry Savelle. And as he was ministering, there was a moment that the Holy Spirit just sat on me. It was so supernatural. 
it arrested my attention how he he just sat uh, hovered over me in the at the at my desk and as he did it was when Dr. Savell made this statement and the Lord made me stop it and I rewound it and I rewound it and I probably sat there for over 10 or 15 minutes rewinding and listening to this one statement and crying and recommitting my life to the Lord, <laughs> recommitting my, my dedication to His purpose. Yeah. But this was the statement that Dr. Savell made that the Holy Spirit brought alive in such a supernatural way. He said this, he said, don't quit now. If you quit now, you are going to miss out on manifestations of my favor like you've never experienced before. And it wasn't just that I wanted to hear that. I needed to hear that. And the Holy Spirit, when he came into the room and made that so vibrant to me, and... It, it still stirs me. If you quit now, you are going to miss out on manifestations of the favor of God like you have never experienced before. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm glad I didn't quit. Amen. I'm glad I didn't give up on the favor of God and I'm glad I did not allow the difficult situations to deter me or to uh, make me want to pull back or to withdraw from my stand of faith. Don't quit now. If you quit now, you're going to miss out on the manifestations of the favor of God like you have never experienced before. And so the Lord began to have me to study that word favor, and I looked in the dictionary to find out what does the favor of God mean? What does favor mean? And these are some of the... Uh, definitions that I discovered in my search and one of them means to support to support and it means to bear or hold up to sustain or maintain by supply to maintain by supply to support and God took me to Exodus chapter 12 with the example of the Israelites and God's favor upon them in Exodus chapter 12. And I'll just uh, read that example that he gave me. Hallelujah. Exodus 12, verse 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Now, it has to be the supernatural force of God's favor for the servants, the, the Israelites who were servants, to their masters, the Egyptians, to walk in. And when it says require and lent, the, the original language that they asked it of them. They did not promise to return it. They just said, may I have your pearl necklace and can I have your gold watch and can I have your diamond ring and they gladly gave it and can I have that china that you only use for special yes you can can I have that red linen and that purple linen yes you can that's all of those things they didn't get from their payment as slaves, but they had them in the wilderness because of the favor of God. Yes. God gave favor before, the night before they left. Right. It was supernatural. And it was a supply yeah. for them to serve God with. Yeah. It was a supply. He maintained them by supply. Before they left, they left wealthy. Amen. Payment for over 400 years of servanthood they came out with the wealth of Egypt because of God's favor and in the same way there the keeping power of God in Goshen who kept them from the darkness and kept them from the plague that supernatural power of God moved in a favor that brought supply and it can be a supply of the spirit that helps you have strength 
to walk through things, that helps you have wisdom to know how to handle situations. It can be a supply in the natural, a supply of finances, a supply of resources, a supply of knowing the right people. But it's a supernatural flow of God's favor to support, to, to sustain you, or to maintain you by supplying for you. The second definition I found was the definition to endorse. To endorse. And it means to approve. And he took me to the example of Ruth in Ruth chapter 2. And how God gave her favor that was an endorsement. Favor that was an endorsement for her life. And by this endorsement, it brought a supply and a sustaining into her life. Now, Ruth was not born into the lineage of God's people. She was married to a man, though, who was in the lineage of God's people. But her husband passed away, and her mother-in-law also lost her husband and her other son. And so there were no men in the family bringing any financial support. And widows in that time were in a difficult situation if they did not have an estate or an inheritance. And so uh, Naomi, the mother-in-law to Ruth, chose to return to her homeland and she released her two daughter-in-laws to go back to their families because she had no way to support them and nothing to offer them in the future hope of anything. And so she released them both to go back to their families and to start their homes over again. And um, one of the daughters, daughter-in-laws, Orpah, she went back. But Ruth said, I will go with you. And your God will be my God and your people will be my people. And she helped take care of Naomi. She helped to see to Naomi. And one of the things that happened was when they got back to Naomi's homeland, she went into the fields to reap what was left by, by ceremonial law, by Mosaic law, that there was a, parsh, a, a, a portion, a part of every field, the outside ring of the field you need to leave for those who are poor. And so she went to go get out of that portion something to help feed Naomi. And as she is gleaning, she, it says in the Bible, she just happens upon a certain field that was owned by a man named Boaz. But Boaz was the legal redeemer to Naomi. He was, the, he was one who was in the lineage of, Na, of, of uh, Naomi's husband, Naomi's family. And so without Ruth knowing it, She's in his field, and she's just there to get the portion for the poor, what's left for the poor. And when Boaz comes and asks of the people who are working that day, who is that woman? And they identified her by what she was doing for Naomi. They identified her as the woman who's taking care of Naomi. They identified her by her kindness and by her, her generosity to be there. She didn't have to be there. There was no uh, a legal requirement for her to have stayed, but she is following the path of God's favor. She is ministering to Naomi, and he said, you tell the reapers to leave her handfuls on purpose. And here she is just trying to follow behind the reapers and get what's left over. And suddenly, glory to God. Look at that supply. Woo! Hallelujah! They must be slipping up there. They left a whole handful on this. And then she comes to the next bush. 
She comes to the next plant. And before you know it, she's got this full supply. Notice what it says here in chapter 2 and verse 10. Because he comes to her and he tells her, don't go to anybody else's field. If you stay here, I'll make sure that nobody bothers you, that you'll be safe here and they'll watch out for you. And she fell on her face in verse 10 and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found favor, grace in your eyes that you should take knowledge of me seeing I am a stranger? God endorsed her. God endorsed her because of what she was doing for Naomi. That's how she was identified. And, and God gave favor to her. And not only does she receive handfuls on purpose, not only does she have the protection and is able to eat and drink with the servants of Boaz, but in the next few chapters we find out she owns the field she used to work in. Because she becomes married to Boaz because of the favor of God and is in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ruth is a great, 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 great grandmother to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the favor of God. That's, that's favor heaped upon favor. Spiritual blessing heaped upon spiritual blessing. Another definition that the Lord gave me was the word, was the uh, definition to assist. That favor is, is God assisting us. Assisting us. And he gave me an example in Daniel chapter 1. So we've seen that favor is a support. God shows us favor by supporting us and maintaining us. He shows us favor by endorsing us. And now he shows us favor by assisting us. And in Daniel chapter 1, I want to look first of all at verse 9. Hallelujah. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. God brought him into favor. This man looked favorably upon them. They had been taken into captivity, Daniel and the other uh, Hebrew boys, Hananiah, Ashael, and uh, Azariah, who is often referred to as uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or as Liliana says, Rakshak and Benny. If you have a toddler, you might know about Veggie Tales. <laughs> they had been brought into captivity under King Nebuchadnezzar, and so they didn't have rights. They didn't have legal uh, uh, avenues to try to uh, protect what their, their assignment was with God, what they were supposed to eat but they did have favor. And so God assisted them by giving them favor. One of the, the definitions is to cause to stand. When God assists us, he causes us to stand. Hallelujah. And so in verse 19 of this same chapter 1, verse 19 it says, Now the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Therefore they stood before the king and in all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers and all that were in the realm. He found them ten times better. Hallelujah. So they had favor that enabled them, because of that favor, they were not forced to eat the food that had been offered to idols that would have violated their conscience. They were given the favor to eat what was appropriate for them to eat in the eyes of God. And in doing so, God favored them even greater because they, were, they operated in that diligence and that discipline in that area he, he gave greater favor 
so that they were found ten times. You know that was God. Amen. That they were found ten times better than all of the others. In wisdom, in understanding, in all of the matters that the king inquired of them, they had the greater wisdom, and they had the greater understanding because of the favor of God. Because of the favor of God. Another definition that I found for the word favor means to make easier. To make easier. And Psalm chapter 30 and verse 7 is the example that the Lord directed me to. Psalm 30 and verse 7. To make easier. It says, Lord, by your favor you have made my mountain to stand strong. You did hide your face and I was troubled. He said, by your favor you have settled strength for my mountain, the center column reference says. You have made my mountain to stand strong. That makes it easier. If I've got God helping me to stand, then that makes it easier. Amen? So to make it easier, God's favor releases the things that we need to fulfill the call of God in our life. We will not be able to fulfill the call of God, the full, the full measure of what He's designed for us. You can't get it without favor. If you could get it without favor, you could get it without God. You can't get it without Him. You need His favor. And He wants you encircled with it, surrounded in it. He wants you walking in this favor. He wants it pronounced over your life. He wants it operative in your life all of the time because He wants you in the fullness of the blessing. He wants you in the full measure of His favor. Hallelujah. He wants to help make things easier for you. He wants to do that. Another definition means to provide with advantages. To provide with advantages. And I think this is one that most of us would, would, would think from the teachings that, that I've heard on favor. That's what would come to mean. is to provide with an advantage. And we looked at Psalm chapter 5 verse 12 where he pro, uh, provides us favor like a shield. Hallelujah. And lastly, the definition that I found was to show special privileges. To show special privileges. And Psalm 4111 is the example that I have for this. To show special privileges. By this I know that you favor me because my enemy does not triumph over me. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's favoring me. By this I know that you favor me because my enemy does not triumph over me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we look for the favor of God, as we are accessing and entering through faith into this favor that is supplied in such an abundant amount that it's described as being heaped up as favor upon favor, grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. Hallelujah. Let's look at a New Testament instruction in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Well, we have all received of his fullness this grace. And now a, a New Testament instruction is given to us to be strong in it. To be strong in this grace. And although the favor of God is available for us, we can walk in it in a consistent basis. We can live in this favor. We can have this flow of favor. And, and some of you ladies, if you were here yesterday when I was talking about 
uh, in, in women's, we had a ladies Bible study yesterday and I was, we were talking about prayer and we got over into a place where we were talking about communion with God and um, I was using an example of my life before Christ and how destruction was so consistent. It was a flow of destruction in my life, a, a, a flow. I mean, it was just, it, it was working without me trying to work it. It, it was, d destruction was just an on, it was like gaining momentum every day, like a train that gets faster with e every mile that it goes and it's, it's, it's increasing, that destruction was increasing in my life. And as I was talking about that, I realized how the favor of God is now the, the momentum of my life. Woo! And I've been, I've been rejoicing about it ever since. I mean, it came to me as I was describing that yesterday about how I had been yielded to that destruction for so long that it had gained a momentum. But now I've been walking under the favor of God. I've been walking under the favor of God since 1992. And that favor every year, every week, it's just that momentum of favor is increasing. That momentum of favor. And the more I operate in the word, the more I am building my faith about the goodness of God, the greater of a flow and an effectiveness it has in my life. And there's a momentum of the blessing of God. There's a momentum of the blessing of God. God wants there to be a, a momentum, an increase, abundant increase of favors. Is that what the covenant of blessing is? An abundant increase of favor? Yeah. Hallelujah. He wants that to be operating in our life. Amen. He says, be strong in the favor. Be strong in this favor. Hallelujah. Be strong in favor. Can you be strong in favor? Can, can you increase in your strength about the favor of God? Hallelujah. Can, can you identify it every time favor happens? I'll, I'll tell y'all. You've just got to be, you've got to be quick on the draw about praising God. I mean, just, just be hair trigger. Be a hair trigger praiser. Last night, there was a thunder and lightning storm. Many of you may have heard it. It woke me up. I heard it. And uh, when I got up this morning, I realized that my electricity had gone out at some point in the night. And um, as I was preparing to leave the house, I realized my garage door wasn't opening in the rain this morning. And so, you know, I'm, I'm calling pastor and, and saying, where's the breaker box? And there's nothing wrong with the breaker box. And, and so I'm just okay. And he says, well, this is how you can go. You pull that red cord, open it the, the manual way, and I'll fix it when I get home. We'll work on it. I said, okay. And so, you know, got out the door. And uh, as I was coming in, Liliana and I were coming in the church, and I was remarking to Pastor Larry about the storm last night, and I said, I think the lightning may have done something to our garage door opener. It won't work. And he came back in the room a few moments later, and it was like he wasn't sure why he was telling me this. He said, you know, something similar happened to me one time, and I just hit the reset button on an outlet, and it wasn't even the outlet that wasn't working. But they must have been connected to the same circuit because when I hit that reset button, it made it work. Well, I thought, okay, I'm going to try that. I'm going to look for any outlet that's got a reset button in that garage. And when I went home today, sure enough, on the wall, the outlet on the wall, I just reached down and hit that reset button, and the garage door opener started working. And I was so excited. I, I, I called Pastor Larry, and I said, it worked, it worked. And, I, and Liliana said, we need a praise parade. That's right. We sure do. We sure do. I mean, that girl, she is trained to know when it's time to praise the Lord. I, I was excited, and she said, Mommy, we need a praise parade. And so we paraded around the house praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Because that did not just happen. 
I could, I, you know, what would have happened if the favor of God had not moved to put in him to come tell me what had happened? I would have spent however much money it cost to get somebody to come up. If, and, you know, my husband, would have, he was going to unplug it and try to do some different things. And we would have probably paid the this, this, this service charge for somebody to come out and walk over and press that button. <laughs> but the favor of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that might not seem, I mean, we, but you've got to be quick to recognize the small things. Someone might ridicule you if you worship God about getting a good parking spot. But let them laugh because you know it. You know that when I recognize what God does for me in the small things, it just positions him to know he's going he's gonna to get praise for me when he does something for me in the bigger areas too. Because I'll praise him over a parking lot. And I'll praise him over open doors. And I'll praise him over wisdom coming to me in a way of uh, maintaining a supply and assistance. I'll praise him over those things because that didn't have to happen. But God is good to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Be strong in the grace. Be strong in the favor of God. You've got to look for the favor. Talk about the favor. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1. And one of the things that will help us to be strong in the favor of God is to, to recognize it is a force of the favor of God, not just things happening. Those things that happen are a result of the favor. They are not the favor itself. They are what the favor is causing in our life. 1 Peter 1 and verse 13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the favor, the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hope for the favor. Hope to the end. Always have an expectation of favor. Always have an expectation of favor. So that means you're going to have to be looking for it. You know, if someone is expecting the bus, they're looking for it. If they're expecting it, any moment, it's going to be here. They're not going to, to walk away. They're not going to set their books down. They're not going to set their bags down. They're, no, I'm expecting it to arrive any moment. It's on time. Well, I don't see it. It's, it's, I'm expecting it. So expecting is looking for it, thinking about it. Hallelujah. But notice what he said. You, to do this, you've got to gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up means to brace up the mind. One translation says put the mind in gear. Put the mind in gear. Brace it up. Brace it uh, um, have it clear and ready for action. Prepare your mind to act, the voice translation says. This girding up the loins of your mind, the loins of your mind is referring to what's being created in your mind, what you're imagining. And if a person says, well, nothing good's ever going to happen to me, they don't have hope in the favor of God. If they say, Oh, well, if anybody's going to get laid off, it's probably going to be me. They're not expecting favor. He says you've got to brace and gird up and prepare. Girding up, when they were instructed uh, to gird themselves it, when they were going to eat the Passover meal, get ready to travel was the, was the emphasis. Is put on your shoes and go ahead and get your your traveling clothes on because you're leaving here. You're leaving this situation. And so he's saying, gird up your expectation, what's being created in your mind, so that you are expecting favor. So that you're expecting the favor of God to work in this situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is important. 
And I'm going to refer back to Dr. Savell because he has taught me so much about favor. And if I, if I, I, I always receive so much from his personal examples as well. But he said this uh, in one of his teachings. He said, the more I take control of my mind and build my awareness and expectancy of God's favor, the less I have to deal with the fear of failure. That's something that he's learned in his, in his ministry. He said, the less I have to deal with the fear of failure. And he was referring to times that he had great financial projects going on, great uh, uh, building projects or land uh, that he was acquiring or uh, things that he was doing in the ministry. And instead of having to battle in his mind, what if the money doesn't come in? What if it doesn't happen? What if uh, all of those things that people of any different, whether it's ministry or your own business or whatever, those ideas of failure come. And he said he found that if he in advance built his expectancy of God's favor, he didn't have to deal with the fear of failure as much. It wasn't an issue because he had already girded up his mind to expect God's going to help me. God's going to help me. And do you know, in 2020, with everything that went on, the, the 20 year project he'd been believing for, he had been believing for 20 years for his Falcon 50, and he got it in 2020. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I started believing for this over 20 years ago. And it has come to fruition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But during that time, he had to expect God's help. That God was going to maintain him by supply. That God was going to assist him. That God was going to endorse him. That God was going to to give him favor and advantages. Amen. Amen. And so he said, I had to build my awareness and my expectancy of God's favor. Hallelujah. And let's close here in Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4 and verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly. Boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to to where favor is on the throne. The throne of God's favor. Yes. Hallelujah. When you, this is what the blood of Jesus has given us access to. This yes. new and the living way yes. is, leads us right to the throne yes. of favor. Yes. Where he's already wanting to say yes. yes. <laughs> he's already wanting to say, you need, I got your help. I am your help. I am your supply. I am your advantage. I am on your side. I am for you. My thoughts for you, they are good and not evil with an end and an expectation. Hallelujah. The plans that I have for you. Hallelujah. They're good. Hallelujah. And he says, come boldly to this throne of favor so that we may obtain mercy and find favor to help. Find grace. Find grace and favor to help in time of need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will find it there. You will find it. And he wants you to come boldly. Come con- That means confidently. With an expectation, God's going to help me. God's going to help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we come tonight to that favor. We come with an expectation of your good. And Lord, we position ourselves to receive your help. Father, you desire to help us in every area of our lives. You desire for your favor to have a manifested flow in our lives to help us. And Lord, we bring our faith to that favor tonight. We expect the favor of God. We worship you in advance for all that your favor is doing for our families. We worship you in advance for the wisdom your favor is bringing. The wisdom your favor is bringing.
resolutions. If there's a problem in here that you've been trying to figure out, God wants you to know He has the solution. If you've been asking yourself, what do I do about this? How do I handle this? Come boldly to the throne of God's favor. Receive and obtain His mercy and His favor to help you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Would you sing that? You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. Worthy. a good night I just want to lay hands on you tonight for a refreshing for spiritual strength Father in the name of Jesus hallelujah I impart into my sister of your spirit I thank you Father for your anointing the peace of God that passes all understanding regards her heart and her mind for the glory of the Lord in Jesus name hallelujah 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 Pastor Ron, is there anything on your heart you'd like to say? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to encourage you. To consider how much God wants to help you. Don't try to tough it out. Don't try to deal with the situation in your, and just like Liliana did when she said, we need a praise parade. Be quick to say, I'm gonna declare God's favor. God's gonna help me. Practice that. Practice, God's gonna help me. God's gonna show me what to do. God's gonna show me how to handle this. Hallelujah. When you immediately look for that and initiate it, 
you'll be surprised at how quickly you'll get a response. I, I'm reminded of a story that Charles Capps told. He was at a hunting cabin and there was ice on the ground and he slipped on that ice. And he said when he fell, his head hit first. He fell, I mean, his feet came way up and his head hit the ice before the rest of his body. And he said, as he was going down, he was declaring, I'm healed, I'm whole, I'm restored, I'm well. And he said, it took 30 minutes, but he, but he had started immediately saying, I'm restored, I'm restored, I'm restored. What he did was he knew something's getting ready to happen and I'm gonna need the restoration of God at work, so let me go ahead and get it going with my mouth. We do that with favor. When the difficult situation comes, start, start. you remember in, I think it's uh, Zechariah, where it said, shout to the mountain, grace. That's how they dealt with that mountain. The favor of God's gonna help me. The favor of God's gonna move in this situation. Amen, they shouted grace, grace to it. Shout favor to that situation. Just begin to say, God, I thank you. You're going to help me. You're going to show me. You're going to assist me. You're going to support me. Hallelujah. You're going to help me here. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your favor, for access to your favor. As we declare the vision of the church, I just want to remind you, March the 13th, Men's meeting, March the 20th, Ladies Bible Study with Susan Allen. She's a, a powerhouse pastor of Russellville Christian Center. Uh, many of you may have known her father, uh, Tom Underhill, who was pastor there for many years. And uh, she is a great woman, a teacher of the Word of God, a great uh, minister of the gospel. And so we're excited uh, for what God is doing. So mark your calendars, amen. The vision of this church is to build people's faith and to frame their world by the word of God. You and I will always be world changers. God bless you. This message and many more materials are available to you free of charge, can be found at buildfaith.net or at any of our location media stores. As always, keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the word of God. Thank you for joining us for this message. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or want to share how this message...